So, our givens. We begin with an infinite sequence of functions. F, K of X, the map from the interval 0 to 1 to R. We know that they're bounded. That is, that they're uniform for them. That is, that they exist in R such that the absolute value of F sub K of X is less than R for all X and all K. We're also given that they're equicontinuous. That means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that x minus y less than delta implies f x minus f y less than epsilon for all x for all k. And given that the functions that we're working with have these properties, what we want to prove is that there exists a subsequence of functions f sub k that converges to f of x, and that converges to this continuous function f of x. So the first thing we're going to do is consider the rationals. As we learned last semester, it's easy to enumerate the rationals, so using any standard method, um, any consistent method of enumerating the rationals, we have rationals x1, x2, x3, etc. What we're going to do is evaluate our function, our um, sequence of functions on x1. So we have f sub 1, x1, f sub 2, x2, x1, sorry, f sub 3, x1, etc. These are all evaluated on x1. Now, we know that all of these values are less than r. So, since all of these exist on the interval negative r to r, they exist on a compact set, which means that by bosonic wire strauss we can extract a convergent subsequence of these values. So, we extract a convergent subsequence, f11, x1, f12, x1, f13, x1, from any point. So, these aren't direct, um, but these are merely terms that we're pulling that converge in the limit to f x1. Now, we take these functions that we've denoted by certain subscript, extract the f, um, the x1, and instead put in x2 and see how that goes. So, we evaluate f11 x2, f12 x2, f13 x2. Again, this exists on the compact subset maybe R to R. So we can again use bolzano weierstrauss to extract a convergent subsequence. We'll call this F21 X2, F22 X2, F23 X2, etc. It converges to F X2. And so using the same method, we can safely generalize to say that fn1 xn, the sequence fn2 xn, converges to f xn for all x of n that are rational numbers. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is diagonalize these. So let's say we have our first sequence here, f11, evaluated on any x as a rational number, um, f12, f13, f14, f15, and then down here we've extracted the next convergent subsequence. We have f22, f23, f24, Five. And again, these aren't linear, these can come from any um, any term of the sequence, but they converge as a um, point. So we've got three, three, etc. And so we select only these functions on the diagonal. So we know that once we form a sequence of these, say f11, f22, evaluated on some x, f33, x, we get to an f. M, M, of X term. From here on out, this sequence will converge for any X sub N, M, sorry, any X sub F. So that means 
for x of m, this sequence will converge in a limit. So from here on out, this will converge, sorry, I don't know if you can see this, um, this will converge to f, x sub m for all m greater than some arbitrary m. So basically that means that this works, this process of demigualization will work for any, um, any rational number. So we've proven this for the rationals, fine. So for the second part of the proof, we're going to move on to the irrationals. What we want to prove is that for some irrational y, that f n n y minus f n n of y is less than epsilon. Uh, this would be a Cauchy convergent sequence, and it would converge to f sub y um, since y is a real number. Um, so in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to pick an x that's a rational number that's very, very close to y, i.e. we're going to pick some x such that x minus y is less than delta. So um, we're going to work from this and use the triangle inequality to expand it into parts that we know um, can be less than epsilon, or more specifically less than epsilon over 3. So we can write f and n y minus f n n y by the triangle inequality is less than or equal to f n n y minus f n n of x, where x is a rational number, plus f n n x minus f m n x plus our final term, f m n x minus f and, um, y. Now we want to show that each of these terms is less than epsilon over 3. This is less than epsilon over 3 because we're given, as we said over here, we're given that all of the f's of k are going to be continuous. Um, so since x and y are within a delta of each other, this is obviously going to be within an epsilon over 3 of each other. The same can be um, held for this one since they're both f sub n. This is also going to be less than epsilon over 3. Now this we proved from the first part, since x is irrational, um, that f sub k converges to f of x. And this is a Cauchy convergent sequence as well, so this is going to be less than epsilon over 3. This means that f n n of y minus f n n of y is less than epsilon. And since this is a Cauchy sequence of reals, it converges to f of x. So we've proven that this sequence, f sub k of x, converges to f of x for all real numbers, for the rationals and the irrationals. The only part of this proof that remains is to prove that the sequence um, converges to a continuous function. That is, that f of x is continuous. So, third part of this proof. Continuity of x. So in order to prove continuity, what we want to prove is that um, all epsilon greater than zero is this delta greater than zero such that x minus y implies f of x. Um, so it's this statement that we want to prove. We can pick any x and y. Um, so we want to prove that f of x minus f of y is less than x and y. Again, we use the handy dandy triangle inequality. So we say f of x minus f of y. And the triangle inequality is less than or equal to f of x minus f and of x 
plus f m um, x minus f m um, um, y plus f m um, um, of y minus f of y. And we want to prove that each of these is less than epsilon in the tree. So we know that this is less than epsilon over 3 by every constant of gains. We know that this is less than epsilon over 3 from our proof in the first part, i.e. that it converges. Um, and again, we know that this is less than epsilon over 3 because it converges for some some m greater than m1, and we know that this converges for some m greater than m2. Therefore, f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. Therefore, it converges. Um, and so we have shown that um, given an infinite sequence of functions that goes um, from the interval 0, 1 to r um, that is bounded, there exists an inequally continuous. Um, it converges to a continuous function, um, 